Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Community Corner. My name is K.L. Smith, joined by Nathan Mooney, good man Cameron Winston. Hey, guys. And today, if you guys aren't familiar with what Community Corner is, uh, it is our weekly discussion about all things relevant in the community. Now, Cameron uh, went on to Reddit two days ago. Yeah, uh, and it was several days ago. Actually. Several days ago, and basically said, hey, guys, submit some questions. And so we're going to uh, run through top three questions from there uh, over on Reddit. And typically, we draw from YouTube. Sometimes we take from the forums. Uh, before we want to hop into that, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the packs that re recently came out. We had a lot of uh, community discussion, a lot of critical feedback uh, about the new packs that went in. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about card acquisition as a part of uh, mm -hmm. this discussion mm -hmm. as well. <clears throat> so first, we had four new packs yeah. um, that went in, and the packs contain cards and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, chess, and a lot of the community did not like that the cards contain chess. Now, the reasoning behind that was that we felt like new player progression would be better uh, if we introduced chess basically into the packs to allow them to uh, uh, progress at a, at, a, at a better rate by having more cards. Now, the reason we uh, came in to yesterday's forums and uh, I'm sorry, it was two days ago on the, the forums and on on Reddit uh, to to address this is because the community fundamentally felt like we should not do that because we stated that uh, cards and uh, some co coins mm -hmm. will not be able to be used to buy on, cards. Yeah. Uh, cards. And so uh, after talking with the team, we looked at that and said, you know what? Despite the, the intent here, uh, we should actually take those down and not do that. Now, the series of mistakes that led to this decision were that a number of key stakeholders at the company were not involved with the decision to put the, that in and, and talking with everyone on the team. There's a couple of people that went and they were like, hey, wait, we actually did that? Oh, I didn't I didn't know about that. I, you know, I wish I would have been included in the discussion. And so yep. as we were talking, it just seems like there was some miscommunication on our part about that intent versus the delivery of those packs. We have removed those packs. We ha are honoring uh, everyone that purchased them with their cards uh, up to that point. And they will come back and they will not have chess in them. So uh, that is the first thing that we wanted to address right mm -hmm. off the bat. And uh, it was our bad, our mistake. We're going to own up to that. And it will not happen again. Now, out of that, there's a, a subsequent question, or not question, a topic I want to talk about, about presenting critical feedback, being upset, and uh, voicing those concerns to various members of the team here at Epic. And I'm going to say, from a philosophical standpoint, more on a gaming level mm -hmm. uh, in general. And I wanted to make sure I, I could talk about this um, because uh, it, it's a big concern of mine and one that doesn't often happen. I've had it happen a couple of times to me personally, but doesn't often happen to anyone here at Epic. Uh, but we get a lot of critical feedback. We get a lot of criticism. And, you know, as, as a, someone that has been in community for a long time now, I am used to that. And I think a lot of people here that have been developing games are also used to taking criticism and being able to handle critical feedback and trying to address those issues in a positive way. Now, where things get a little uh, uh, harder to deal with when there are threats of violence uh, against members of the team or threats on the studio or threats against other members of the community, we will absolutely 100% not tolerate that. It is the worst mm -hmm. form of feedback, if you want to call it that, that is possible. And we do not condone that at all. And I can rest assured that anyone that does that on any platform that you on, we contact authorities immediately. So if you are not happy with the decision that we are making, at the end of the day, everyone here is working on video games. This is, this is, these are not issues that we feel like need to be elevated to threats of violence. And so uh, for anyone out there that is at that point uh, in the game, take a break, take a breather, go play some Fortnite, go take a walk outside, go, go talk to, to a significant other loved one, 
whatever the case may be, do not resort to threats of violence against, against anyone in gaming and members of the team, the community, or any of that, because we take that very seriously and we alert the authorities in those cases. So that needs to be stated as well. And I don't, there's a culmination of things I think that, that led to this. Part of the, is the card acquisition stuff, which mm -hmm. we'll get into shortly, plus the packs. And we completely understand some of the levels of frustration that you guys may be feeling on the community side. But again, keep it, keep your, your lens. Keep your lens framed in the right uh, perspective. We, we take all types of feedback, violence and threats of violence is not part of that at all. No one here signed up for that. You should not be condoning that. You should not be doing that. And that will not be tolerated. So let's just, just very clear. I want to state that. And then now we get into the meat of, of these questions and concerns that players have. So the very first question, I don't know how to say. I'm going to try. You guys know. You got this, dude. Kahi Ababa. Kahi Ababa. Kahi Abaha. Kahi Abaha. Or, or maybe it's Ki -i -abaha -ba. Whatever the name is, sorry if we uh, destroyed your I name. I almost certainly got that wrong. I think, I think so. <laughs> uh, will you ever make every card in gym immediately available to all players? There was a ton of discussion, probably the most upvoted post we've seen on Reddit, almost 1,000 upvotes that talks about issues regarding the current system to acquire cards. So this is something that we've, we talked about a lot internally. Um, you know, the one thing with all of these, these feedbacks and questions like this, the one thing to keep in mind, guys, is that, and this can be very hard, I think, as a player, if you've never seen the dev process and never actually seen it, the dev process of a game is incredibly messy. It involves a lot of trial and error yep. and uh, mistakes that most of the time players never see. see. And one of the drawbacks to you know doing a, a game as a live development product is like, yeah, you get to connect with the community and that's great, but also like everyone gets to see the dirty laundry. And, and this is just one of the times, a lot of, the, the, a lot of times it's like, well, let's try this, let's try that. The core of every decision and this is something like you can you can like write on your tombstone, you can tattoo it on your arm. This will always be true. The core of every decision that we make, no matter whether it's me, whether it's KL or any department in this organization, is to deliver to you, our fans, the best, most enjoyable, fun, competitive, engaging MOBA experience on console and PC. That's what we're here to do every single day. Right. So everything that we do is to do that. It does not benefit us if we make changes to the game that cause us to lose players or alienate people or anything like that. So none of the changes we ever make are designed in a way intentionally to, 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 to drive players away. Like you have to believe that's where we're coming from because that's the truth. And, like, and we, we do not benefit from no. that at all. Right. So what, what benefit would we gain from doing that in the first place? So it, no, if, if we, if we came out with a game and, and, and like, if, if our intent was like, look, we're going to make this game pay to win. And then now it's like, you know, the, we're not delivering on our competitive game promise. And at that point it's like, okay, if we're a legit pay to win game, we're trying to position ourselves as competitive, our competitive community is not going to play the game. How does that benefit us? Correct. How does that help us? Like, like, so that's the, that's the thing you got to like, no matter what you may read in the moment or what you may think the uh the actual play is you got to understand like everyone here is is working on this game that would not exist without your support and you playing it so when we're making a decision please remember that's the motivation for everything that being said why having so, said so, that so first will let's straight out will you ever make every card in gym immediately available to all players the answer to that is almost certainly not no however i mean i hate saying never because again like you never know how sure. things are going to be in the future but almost certainly not it's undesirable it's actually bad for you and let me explain why i think this is true the reason we went for this uh this card system like why not just do an item shop like, so, so that's kind of like the, been the thing that's coming. I was like, why not just do an item shop? It's way more competitive. It's way more fair. That's true. But like, you have no, you have no investment in the item shop in, in, in any other mobile. Like you don't feel like attached to it. It's not like your, you know, Aghanim Scepter. It's not like your Rabadon's death cap. It's just a Rabadon's death cap. You know, it's like, that's what you do. So we wanted to create an itemization system that was more personal and more connected to you as a player. And in order to do that, 
there needs to be a feeling of growth and progression. And, 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 and having that sense of I don't, I, I'm working my way towards goals that are self-directed is incredibly motivational. It's in a motivational loop for players that's very successful at getting players to like feel engaged with the game and feel like they're making progress and actually you know, uh, come back day after day. So we believe as a company that it is more fun of a game to have a game where there's some some cards and you collect them and then you make your own version of the game that you want to play is more engaging than just having a static item shop. That was a decision we made. And that is fundamentally a part of Paragon's design. That's that is in fact fundamentally part of Paragon's design. And and it's something that, you know, it, it it's just like every time you make a game, you make a choice. And sometimes the choices are like, well, I would have preferred a different choice. And that's always true. And there's certain, you know, there's certain players that have been like, well, I would like Paragon more if it was an isometric game. I would like Paragon more if my bullets always hit. I would like Paragon more if uh, you know, my bullets were harder to hit. You know, yep. there's a lot of there's a lot of different sure. yeah. we have a we have a lot of different masters in the video game world. You got a whole huge audience out there so we're always making decisions for the best possible use of our audience but that being said we do not believe fundamentally that a player who does not have every card isn't competitive like that's just not true like we we think that cards are awesome and great and powerful and we want players to like figure out how to like you know use them all but you know at the end of the day you could make really any any 12 cards that you you put together that you know is going to be essentially uh, uh, it's balanced based on how many how many attribute points the cards uh, give you as far as a, a math advantage. And sure, every now and then they'll be like, well, there's this card that he has or that she has that I don't have. But that's true in a, even in a world where you're talking about affinities, right? Like in a world where like you have a fount of experience and I'm not playing, uh, you know, intellect. Intellect. Uh -huh. Then it's like, yeah. well, okay, I, I don't have access to that card, yeah. right? That's again a choice we made. So even if you had fount of experience, you can't run fount of experience in your uh, chaos growth deck. Mm -hmm. So that's always going to be the game as far as that's concerned. So we don't feel that giving players all the cards and gems like removes a tremendous amount of motivational loop as far as like how you engage with the game and how you play the game. That being said, um, one of the things that is true is we are looking for uh, a more something that that any kind of distribution system needs it's really fun to pull the lever and open the box and see what you get that's one of the most fun things it's why you know like slot machines are so much fun right you just pull, pull the lever you have it it's a great feeling but you also need a way to do more directional and and engaged feedback loops so like you need to figure out like okay i want x or y or z how do I get that? So you need to be able to have more directionally focused acquiring. So we are working on ways to do that for cards as we speak. And we have been working on that. Yes, and that is not about new. That. that is something we've Prior wanted. To. So there's there's something I want to I want to rabbit hole in this is we had Matt up here and we talked about gem crafting. Which yeah, he said is something that we're working on. Mm -hmm. And we explicitly said we don't know what we're doing with card crafting or or in some cases I've gone now and clarified it's like. I don't want to talk about car crafting because I don't sound it doesn't sound like car crafting is going to come back. However, what we're trying to figure out is what is the best possible path right now for directed card acquisition or I see a card, I want the thing, I how want do I that get that thing? thing? Yeah. How do I get that yeah. card? And so what we're trying to do is provide avenues for you to do that. And I think we've pretty much settled on what that is going to be as of right now yeah we, we we i think so but even even still like i mean it's one of the things where i hate committing just like this is exactly what we're doing because then it's like one of the things i hate reading is like you know uh i've seen like oh you know matt's a liar cameron's mm -hmm. a liar it's like i hate being perceived that way because right. i'm never i never want to be perceived as, as being untrue i'm really actually bad at being untruthful like anyone who's met me okay like, like if, you, if you comment on this video like if you've ever met me you know i'm really bad at being untruthful and so when I don't know 100% what something is, I don't like talking about it. And that's why like a lot of times it's like, well, Epic's not transparent, they're not forthcoming. If I'm not a million percent sure, I know like exactly what I'm doing or exactly how we're going to do something, I don't like talking about it. And that and makes it, it also makes it difficult for us. And we've said this before, when we communicate early and often, we always oh, yeah. go back to the legacy, uh, we're going to do the teleporting thing. That never yeah, happened, yeah. right? What happens is between that iteration and when we arrived on Monolith, there's this iteration, this iteration, this yep. iteration, this iteration, this iteration, this this iteration. And it's like we we're not going to communicate six different changes or eight different changes or ten different changes between the time that we first said that something was going to happen and then then and it's like, well, actually, it, 
Wait, and, and anyone I don't know who, what the perception that you guys would have would be like, man. Anyone who remembers that blog, <laughs> that was the OG blog. That was my first ever like Shrek blog, <laughs> that, and they, they they don't let me put images in my blogs anymore. <laughs> so so like when when I when I wrote that, I was a hundred percent like we are definitely going to put teleport in this game. And then they played it, and they were like, "What if you're wrong?" And I was like, "But I think it's really good." And then we played it some more, and they're like, "Okay." And they convinced me, and then we talked about it, and like as a team, we decided we're not going to do this. But it's like. But that kind of taught me it's like, hey, you know, even no matter how convinced I am that we're going to do something, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be done. Right. That being said, in this particular instance, the current plan of record, the current plan of record is we're going to have a way for you to be able to uh, purchase cards directly with reputation. With reputation. And we don't know exactly how much yet. We're figuring it out. It's going to be based on time, and we don't know when that's going to come. But uh, it's something that we're talking about actively right now. And again, this isn't a, like we decided it this week kind of thing. This is something we've always had in the works. It's just we're, we're going to talk about it a little early now because we wanted you to know right. this is something that we're and, thinking and, about. And one of the most passionate places that we receive a lot of feedback on card acquisition in general is typically from our most experienced, most, uh, I would say they have the most acquired cards anyway uh, group of community members and that is uh, places on the forums mm -hmm. and, and on reddit and on some places twitter where they already have all the things now what we actually looked into based off of a lot of the discussion around this is well actually what level do you have most of the cards in the game and by level 15 15 you have is that is this, i am quoting this correct i, I mean this is yeah I'm, i am not the guy level 15 you have 80 percent of the cards in the game. That's, that feels right, but I don't know. Like, and I, I mean, believe, and, and Shinberry, you can kick and hop onto this video or thread the subsequent web threads that pop up after this, but I believe it's at, by level 15, you have 80% of the cards yeah. in the game. And, and like I said, and, and, and you know, it's like, is there a world where you have you don't have access to a card and you want to make a deck and you can't make it? But like, can you not make a different deck and a different play style and still be functional and very competitive in our game? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the thing we want to like make sure people get. It's like it's not like oh I don't have this card, therefore like playing Paragon is a waste of time. It's like and if it gets to the point where like it's you know like a, a Plague Lord Melanch situation where it's like if I don't have this card, you know I feel like I'm at a disadvantage. There's probably a problem more with the card than it is with the fact that you don't have it. So like we're we're gonna be looking at stuff like that too. So we have a lot of card fixes coming constantly. That system came in hot. We got a lot of issues and bugs yeah, we gotta work sure. out. Um so hopefully that provides clarity on that. And I want to state this again. <clears throat> the plan of record as of right now is to allow you guys to have uh visibility to be able to look at the card after seeing it in game or after mm -hmm. earning enough rep to say, This is the card that I want, I'm going to get that card. Directed acquisition. Directed acquisition. That's what we want. You and see any, it, any you good, want it, I know I have a path to get there. Any, I need any good RNG it. system for, for distribution, you always want to have a, another directed acquisition. And, and they're coming. We're just working on it. Right. So. And, and these things were planned well in advance, but we didn't have enough information to provide a very clear answer on what that path was. Yep. So let's go on to the second question, second which is question. from Jen Foo Foo. Foo. That one is easy. Yeah. Yep. Do you feel the current assist metrics are where you want them? From a supports perspective, which I play a lot of support, uh, I would really love to see shielding, healing, buffing allies count for receiving assists. So I kind of answered this on Reddit. On Reddit, I saw uh, like, oh, and, and but, but like, I did promise I would answer the, the top three upvoted ones no matter what they were. So I'm just going to say the same thing again, which is essentially like, um, specifically assists, it's not like we're not super happy with it, but what we want is we want consistency. So the number one goal is you don't want assists to be case by case basis. Like we right. don't want it to be like the last time you did damage, except if you're Murdoch, because that's bad. Right. Because we, we had that, like we had Murdoch getting gold, assist gold for his, for his ultimate. And it was just bad. And then it's like, well, now we have a choice of like, it's really fun to use his ultimate and to snipe people from across the map, but you know, if, if the balance guys are like, hey, can we just like change his ultimate and make it something different? Like, I don't think it's worth changing the entire ultimate because the him getting assist gold is too much. Like that that felt like a really bad reason to change something that's really fun to use. Sure. Like, and I I, th I think, and a lot of people think, you know, Mur Murdoch's ultimate is one of the most satisfying part of his kit. It's like just picking off some guy from way over there. Mm -hmm. So that being said, we went with an assist model that a we could implement 
because like we were crunched for time at the, at the time and and we had to change it from the way it was before because remember we yep. had like I don't know if you guys played back in the day, but we had like um, the you know the orbs on the ground you had to pick up, and like that whole thing was just really, really rough. And it all stems back from if you guys are are, are old school enough players to remember the death ball years, right? And they feel like years, even though they're probably weeks. But it's just like let's start at red five of us we kill red we clear the jungle we go mid we get the gank and then we're we're, we're off to the races boys right yeah, like that's yeah. because of because we, we we trying to do is we want it to be nice at first we're like you know what you know what sucks it sucks when i go to the lane and i get a last hit and my carry's like why'd you do that yeah. that sucks yeah. so we're gonna fix that we're just gonna give everybody, everybody go equal man that did not work it yeah. did not work it created this super degenerative gameplay it was super un moba -y. it felt terrible it and it led to to death balling and those other kind of stuff so we needed a which way is still somehow a term now which i would never it's understand so yeah, Devin, death, death balling is not like 25 minutes we grouped right. and pushed it's to not team, death balling. team yeah. play and death ball are very different yes. i think the community has yeah. some some well, well, words, words stick that. we know yeah. words stick with it but but anyways regardless so to, so to move forward uh we in a moba remember what makes you a carry versus not like why is Sarath and wukong and twin blast and, and 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 them why are they considered carries when gideon's not and, and the answer is because in a moba how you distribute the money is how you tell who's a carry and the carries are people who can use money better than other people mm -hmm. that's like the basics of moba philosophy so the idea is that if i'm a carry i leverage more out of every thousand gold i spend than you do as a support if I'm a carry, you funnel more of the resources into me. So right. if you're in a world where it's like, okay, if you're a support, we tried this also as well. We had a, we had a version of a monolith that you guys never played, which was like care, uh, supports had a way better split and had way better assist gold. And what it wound up happening was the real play was don't run a support at all. Run another mage. So it's yeah. like, we're going to do Gideon support or we're going to do gadgets, you know, gadget support, like, you know, whatever. You're going to get more bang for your buck out of the extra additional economy you're getting. Yeah, it's, it's just sort of like back in the day before we made, you know, uh, off lane a thing, it was like, why not just run three carries? It's like, because and you can't shut down every carry. So we had to make a lane, like having a lane where like, like a carry can't just show up and get free farm because it's too dangerous, super critical to having like the idea is you want to have one carry one mid someone just protecting a lane and then you got your, your jungler is like the spoiler to make plays mm -hmm. like that's if that's what you're actually going to make for your core design you need to make sure you're reinforcing that design with economy rules that all being said if you if you put the gun to my head and said do you love these assist rules right now no like we want them to be better. We want support to be a more engaging position. We want it to feel better. We want assist rules to be better. But it's not trivial to say, I, I want assist to work off shields. That is not a thing that we can just do. Right. It's not like, a, well, assist work on shields checkbox, right? These things are a little bit more complicated to implement and require good engineering efforts and good, solid, you know, well thought out design, design. that yeah, we don't sure. like, we, we, we have not prioritized that right now because there's a lot of other things that require our attention that are much more important than this. Yeah. And here, well, and even hearing about the older iterations and the older versions of like the I sharing and some of that. that yeah, no, so the bad. sharing and the different like areas where the economy has been split, understanding how that affects the different levels of gameplay as yeah. well. I I think there's a there's also that like well why can't you just do that yeah and it's then, a nuanced and then when you, area when you yeah. break it down and you say well if you have a, economic rules that say support gets more money but realistically you don't actually play a support in that role that means well yeah. why would I even why would I buy why are you making yeah. support yeah, there's nothing in this that game? forces you to pick a Muriel right like you could just be like okay here's my my five like my five uh, mage comp or my five carry comp right. and if, essentially if you can pick five carries and win because you're like a top tier player or whatever then good on you but the idea is it, can an average comp of solo cures pick five carries and win probably not I mean, it, when it works, it really works, and it's hilarious. And, you know, because eventually, like, if you just sort of wait long enough, the five-carry comp always wins. Always wins. But, like, the idea is, like, it should never come online because there shouldn't be they shouldn't be able to get money out of the map well yeah. enough. So the support is there to help bridge that gap because otherwise, why wouldn't you just be five carries? So it's like you have to have different timing windows for when heroes come online to make the different roles relevant. Otherwise, right. they just don't they all blend into one, and everyone's just like, I'm a dude who does damage in mid, and I'm a dude who does damage in the loft lane and whatever. Yeah. So that's that's my answer for that question. I uh, hope that was helpful uh, for people. I hope so. And now right. we have awkward redditor ninety nine. Redditor ninety nine. Uh, 
what some members of the, the community feel i think you've, I, I feel like you've answered this one before. i have answered this one too but we're gonna uh, do it again uh, i promise some members of the community feel like certain abilities should go on a soft cooldown if interrupted mid animation say 10 to 20 percent of the full cooldown as in standard and other mobas provided the ability doesn't grant cc immunity even if whoever casted the ability didn't benefit from it such as Morgesh alt, Gideon portal, howitzer alt, etc. Because whoever interrupted the ability should be rewarded for the managing to do so in such a short window of time. How do you feel about that? So literally everything I said in that post, if you, if you, if you link this comment in Reddit, I actually wrote, it's my literally first ever Reddit post that I made on the forums. Uh, you can read it, it has all this information. Just to rehash, a uh, couple things about this. It is not standard for other MOBAs. In fact, it is unstandard for other MOBAs. Like if you have a, a long cast animation, like if, if you're if you're playing like Zeus in Dota, and you go to like do your like you can cancel the cast and actually just fake all day long. You know, Earthshaker can bring up his his, his totem and just do this all day long. You know, so so it, it's not actually standard. What's standard is if you cast a spell, it happens. If it's a channeled spell, it casts instantly and you could be interrupted at any time and it goes on cooldown and if it's an instant spell it just happens instantly that being said it really also doesn't matter what other mobas do because like what we're doing in paragon is is sort yes. of our own thing yep. but but i just wanted to mention that because a lot of times people throw out that but other mobas do this they don't no, they don't they don't do this the second thing is um like it is it feels really terrible to have a cool awesome animation and that's a gameplay hindrance that feels terrible. When the animators want to give us a really awesome, like when Morgish goes on the ground and she picks up her dagger and the giant Morgish shows up and there's this moment of awesome, the counterplay of that is if you are the person being stabbed, you can pop a cooldown, you can hit a shield, you can do some kind of effect, you can go into stasis. The, the counterplay is Heaven's not fury. stun yeah. them. So here's another thing. Is like a lot of the community thinks stunning someone is an interrupt. It's not. If you've ever gone back to like, any kind of old school RPG, like let's let's like any like any like old school uh, MMO, like you want to take you know World of Warcraft any point, right? Interrupts were specifically designed to be interrupts. Remember, stuns are not interrupts. Yep. That, is, that is 100 percent true. If you're if you're casting that. like if you're, if you're a frost mage, I, did I dude? Yeah, this I guy, can 100 percent confirm it. As a, as I've been doing this all day. As, a, as an MMO, uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a 10 year WoW yeah. recovery myself. <laughs> if you're uh, casting a spell and you have a three second cast time and you get hit with a stun, you just get stunned and then you go back to casting. Yeah, no, your there's spell. specific inter that put you on a, a, a like a put you on a cooldown. But you noticed it was thing. a feature of the of the ability. Yes. It said interrupts the spell, comma. And puts all spells and, and even, of that And even cooldown. specifically in that yes. school, if necessary. If we ever had an ability that was designed to be an interrupt, it would literally just be that. Like, for yep. example, if if Bellica's Q, like if her if her seismic, seismic grip assault? did not actually stun you, but instead interrupted you, then this would be absolutely how we do it. We'd say, look, this doesn't do damage. This just interrupts you. So if you're the interrupt character, you walk around holding onto this, going, oh, "I'm gonna," get, you know, yeah. right? But like, that's also that's terrible. The that is the Mooney character. But that, but, but Mooney, that's terrible because having a. So so here's something. This is one of the the classic uh, design problems uh, of 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 hero design, which is something I tell all my designers about, and it's something I call the Earthshock pro, uh, problem. Shout out to World of Warcraft. Shut up. Uh, the Earthshock original Earthshock was an ability that 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 sh that uh, Restoration Shamans had, great. which it did a bunch of damage and it also interrupted whatever spell you were casting. Yep. So what happened was, um, it, if you're if you're a math designer for this ability and it has a six second cooldown, which it did, you assume that every six seconds this is all, you're just doing doing this that because that's what you have to assume. So the DPS numbers are balanced, assuming you're hitting this on cooldown every six seconds. However, if you are playing in a fight which requires a timed interrupt, or if you're in PvP, you can cannot hit it every six seconds because you need it on cooldown so that you can interrupt whatever it is, which meant you didn't use it, which meant your DPS was low. So either you could choose to do the appropriate DPS and not have your interrupt, or you could choose to have your interrupt and do worse DPS. So this is why you try to make sure that abilities, generally speaking, there is always there is a correct time to use them. And there's not two competing correct times to use them. Mm -hmm. So yes, does Bellica's uh, a Q, uh, does the Seismic Assault do damage? Absolutely. But no one is spamming Bellica's Seismic Assault to damage people. You want it for the stun. So you hit that ability when it's time to stun someone. Right. 
that's the major design right. philosophy of it, right? So giving a player an interrupt and just saying, like, look, here's the thing, all it would be would be an interrupt. Yep. So it wouldn't be an interrupt and damage because otherwise we'd have the earth shock problem. And so because of that, you want to be in a situation where you don't design abilities that are so narrow in scope that you're just walking around waiting to do something. Like this is a lot of the problem with some of our, our, our supports actually. Like they're very, they're, they, you know, I talked about like how we need more engagement. Like you don't want to just be a support where it's like my whole gameplay revolves around reacting to things. You want to have a, active things you can do mm -hmm. because then a lot of times you wind up looking not using your abilities, right? And so the idea of this is, and, and, the, and the cool down of this is, number one, stuns are not interrupts. Stuns are stuns. And you, and you just should stun people when you want to when you want to control them so that you can kill them. Number two, if we had interrupts, they would work this way, but we don't. Mm -hmm. Number three, th it will never work this way. This is not good gameplay. It does not, it is not rewarding. It is, it does not feel good. And it will incur, if we did this, it would encourage us as designers to reduce how awesome everything looked to get the gameplay we wanted. Because sometimes in a MOBA, because it's a MOBA, and one of the most MOBA statements that is ever true is you need to be able to hit a button and, and make something happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, like you just need this. I just need this to occur. Like Bellica, this just goes, you are stunned now. That is what she does. Yeah. Like her whole balance is around. She just decides you are stunned and, and it's, it's not that hard to hit if you're close and it's, you know, sometimes you can get it, you know, far, you but something that, you know, <laughs> you, you gotta like, you just, you know, Gideon just decides that a meteor is falling on your head. Like that happens. Right. And, and the, these are these are like core MOBA things, and the reason that it works this way is because we don't have to worry about like, well, if if I'm going up against a, a Perth was a stun that has a eight or ten second cooldown, I, I can't use my two minute cooldown ability because like you can just be like, oh, 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 you know, that's not gameplay. That's just like. It just feels terrible, and, and and if you we actually had it for a brief moment because it was broken internally, where Morgush's ult would go on cooldown if it got interrupted. Oh man, it was. The most unsatisfying, terrible thing, the, the, the giant thing would appear and be like, oh, and nothing. Right. Like pillow fighting at the end. Just like, just, <laughs> she, just, she just goes right through. You're like, just kidding. Like, <laughs> it, was, it doesn't feel good. Nope. It, 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 mm -hmm. it feels super anticlimactic, and it's just not good gameplay. It's just not good design. So hopefully thoroughly answered that question. Because that's, that's one that pops up every now and again. Yep. Um, so those were the three most... Uh, uploaded mm -hmm. on, on Reddit. We'll try to find some from some other places for the next Community Corner. What I do want to kind of end on, uh, and I'm going to say this from the community team standpoint, we get a lot of feedback on hero balance. And what I try to do and what Mooney tries to do, do and, and Chris and Ed and Skyler <clears throat> is take your guys' feedback and pass it on to Cameron. Pass mm -hmm. it on to the design team. What we don't do is engage in conversation around balance about what we think uh, occurs because we are at a different level of play than everyone else. And, and, and I don't mean that in a way that we're better or worse. I mean it that everyone has a different level of understanding, mm -hmm. mechanical skill. And so us being able to relate is only like how I play this hero. And mm -hmm. so only thing that we can do in, that, in those types of situations is come into a, a, hey, such and such feels overpowered. Such and such feels uh, underpowered. Such and su such in this team composition aren't great. This is what I do in those. This is, this is how I play the game. These are the things that I do. And what I try to do, um, and so does Ed to some extent, is we actively show that we play the game by posting videos and trying to help people understand what they can do. Because for many of you, the, the question that I would ask you and, and what, what makes it hard is, is that uh, we don't know if the hero that you play, if you're missing, let's say your, your hit percentage is 67%, you're playing a carry, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just making up numbers. Someone else's is 37%, right? And they don't know this because we don't provide a percentage. Hey, that's a, that's a good thing. We don't pro provide percentages for stats, but if you say that someone is hitting 67% of my stats and they're like, hey, TB feels awesome. I love TB. And another person says, ah, TB doesn't feel good, but their shot percentage is 37%. Right. That's a difference in mechanical skill and mechanical prowess. Yeah. The other thing is, and, and, and Cameron has made this up, it's positioning. It's 
do I understand yeah, the team composition? And there's so many. There's such a is, variety of aspects to mobile right. gameplay, that, and there's so many areas where you might and, be missing something or not fully grasping something. Right. Or, but the am most I playing to have fun? Yeah. Am I playing to win? If I'm playing to win, am I looking at the draft and I'm saying, you're picking this hero, so oh, I should probably position myself at yep. this hero. What did my other guy, what did my other teammate pick? How do I synergize with my teammate? How do I counter what the other team is doing? What type of decks do I have available for countering this situation? These are all the things that you have to think about when I engage in these types of conversations. And what I don't want to happen uh, is it get into this circular thing discussion of I play this way you play that way I'm wrong you're right and that is the type of, of circular discussion I talk about when it comes to hero balance and I feel like it's so so important that that none of the community team interjects in how you guys perceive the game to be when it comes to a feedback on heroes and I pass that to Cameron yep. and, and I don't want you guys to feel like we are trying to tell you how to play you can say, this is how I handle this situation. But engaging in those conversations becomes, and I've, I've done this before and I've learned the hard way, it does not result in a, in a situation where you guys feel like we're trying to be helpful. I think it results in a situation where you feel like we're being combative and defensive, and that is not the intent. So we just pass that feedback along, and I hope that's very clear for those of you out there. And, and one, one more, one like final thing on this, just two things I want to comment on. The first thing is, is also these guys may not know the answer to your question. Like if you if you came in the question and said like you know uh, this ability, why is this ability the way it is? Like you know uh, Muriel's like a slow shot. Like right. why why is that? Like why is it so slow so long to to animate? Like it, it's because we haven't really got a chance to look at her yet. Like that's not desirable. It's just it's old speeds that we have. Haven't updated yet. Like Bellica's uh, uh, seismic assault was, was really, slow. really slow because we didn't yeah. update it for for monolith, and we really needed to. So like, but but if they say, well, oh, is it? It's balanced around that. Like not right now. It's not. You know, and that's one of the things that they may not know that, and like that's context that I have that they don't, and so that's why I try, we try to like give you that kind of information either from me on Reddit or on the community corners. Mm -hmm. And and the second thing is like, again, if if. If it was all about the way we intentioned it, then Sarath wouldn't be a jungler, and you'd never see Wukong in the offlane. So, right. I mean, those were never intended. And those, those are, are both safe lane carries. People those are, that out. Those are yep. what people like to do. Right? And more power to you guys. I mean, if that's how you want to play it, like, you, you guys are, are always the arbiters of how it's played. Right. Because you're the players. So. And, and so I just wanted to end on that note because we get, we get questions about in, interjecting in, in hero feedback. And so I just try to be really straightforward with people is my perception of the game and my understanding of the game is, is it a different, I could be less or more knowledgeable than a than, uh, person asking a question. And I always default to uh, our, our experts in the building when it comes to interjecting about balance as a whole. It's just not what I do. I'd rather pass along feedback than say, yeah, we plan on doing this. Wait, Cameron, do we actually plan on doing that? Right? Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. not, it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's show. Very straightforward. Uh, tried to answer as many questions as we could. Again, the packs, not intentional uh, uh, with the, the way they were delivered. Uh, we made a mistake. Made sure we were rectifying uh, that. And uh, we want to make sure that we, we just make the best game that we can make for our community. That's it. So yep. hope you guys enjoyed it today. And we'll see you guys next week. See you guys.